This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. We look now at the growing movement in support of reparations in the United States for black descendants of people who were enslaved. The state of New York recently joined California to establish a commission to study reparations and racial justice. More work's being done at the local and personal level, which is the focus of a new documentary premiering this week on PBS, The Cost of Inheritance, an America Reframed special. This is the trailer. Cornelius, age eight. A discovery brings strangers together. Seeing those names, John. it humanized it for me. Every time I say I'm the fifth generation of Zeke Quarterman, an enslaved man, part of me dies. On a journey across the years. Field article number 15, 40 acres, a mule, and $200. Abraham Lincoln is assassinated. The enslaved got nothing. Congress passes the Homestead Act, Social Security, the GI Bill, the FHA. Now, when we come to Washington, we're coming to get our check. <laughs> Mama, I love you. I can't breathe. Connected by a common cause. Harm happens locally, so repair has to happen locally. Do the work. Look at your own history. What was your family's role? Seeking justice and peace. For more, we're joined by some of the people featured in The Cost of Inheritance. In Savannah, Georgia, Randy Cotterman is a fifth-generation descendant of Zeke Cotterman, who was enslaved by George Adam Keller. Randy co-founded the Reparation Project alongside Sarah Eisner, a fifth-generation descendant of Keller. In Denver, Lottie Lee Abdullah is with us, a descendant of William Hayes Paxton, who was an enslaver in the Mississippi Delta. She's with Reparations for Slavery. And in New York, we're joined by Yoruba Richin, the award-winning director of this documentary. Yoruba, before we play some clips, yes, let's start with you. Talk about this movement for reparations uh, that's hardly hitting the corporate media radar, but is happening all over the country, both at state level, city level and personally, like the ones you document in this film. Absolutely. Uh, good morning, Amy. Thank you for, for having us. Um, it's pretty incredible the uh, pace in which we see reparations um, moving, if everything from studying state commissions, uh, like the one New York just passed, we're actually now the third state, Illinois has one as well, uh, to cities all across the country who are looking into how to uh, move forward on reparations for descendants of, of, um, of enslaved folks and these personal stories. Uh, you know, as we were making this film over the past two years, uh, past three years, we could hardly keep up with uh, all of the different things we were hearing about, um, and even since you know, since the film has been completed, so it's a far cry from where we have come. I mean, I remember, you know, growing up uh, in the the 80s, you talk about reparations, you were considered a fringe, you were considered, you know, a crazy person. So, um, you know, this movement has been ongoing, as the film shows, since the end of slavery. Black people have been fighting for reparations, um, and it's a bit a, and it continues to be a long struggle. But um, what we show in the cost of inheritance is that there is uh, it, that it's actually happening, and it's happening on a personal level. Um, and on these on these local levels, which will hopefully uh, give rise to and more momentum for it to happen on a federal level. Uh, uh, Randy Quarterman, uh, your family is linked to Sarah Eisner's family through slavery. You're a fifth generation descendant of someone who was enslaved by George Adam Keller. Uh, after she contacted you, you founded the Reparations Project. Uh, to save the Quarterman's family lands in uh, uh, Monteith and Port Wentworth, uh, Georgia, after it faced various legal challenges. Could you talk about the relationship you formed with Sarah? Yes, good morning. Um, the relationship I formed with Sarah was uh, an eye-opening one for me, uh, uh, being born in Japan and raised in Japan until I was 13, and then coming here not knowing anything about my Black history, or anything like that to learn about our heirs' property and, and an acre of it being taken by uh, eminent domain, and and also learning about 
the uh, ninety percent of land uh, black land loss that happened in the South itself. So Sarah opened that door for me to really engage and really understand the history of uh, uh, of my African American people, my black people, and also understanding my dynamics of my own family. You know, I want to go lost. to a clip from The Cost of Inheritance um, that features you, Randy, as well as the woman who contacted you, Sarah Eisner. In 2019, I was speaking with my cousin Bill, who lives in the Savannah area. Bill said the Quarterman family still own this plot of 10 acres of land that George Adam Keller gave uh, Zeke Quarterman in the 1800s. When we found out the land was given to Zeke, he came alive again to us. Hey, you got anything on your heart, right? Your this is the time, hallelujah. The August 2019, now I had an email from Sarah acknowledging who her family was and if I was a descendant of Zeke Quarterman, who was enslaved by uh, George Adam Keller. I was just, like, taken off track a little bit. I was definitely nervous and scared. My question was, what are they doing here? What, what's, the, what's going on? I remember thinking, what have I done? What if they yell at me? If they do, they do. They, they have every right to be angry. I consulted with Pat Gunn, somebody that was doing this type of work and understanding it. And so you're standing in a sacred ground this is a slave holding bin, we believe. She told me, say, hey, you know, your ancestors is on your back. It's a special moment for you. You need to engage. See, like one, yeah. two, three, four. And it's, it's, it's staggered into a corner, like where a house would be right here. For me and my family, we, we know this as heirs' property. Land that's passed down through family generations that has no will to say this person owns the land. It should have been Zeke's house. This probably was the house structure that was they lived at. But the land is not in our possession. The court appointed a lawyer became the executor of our property. See, it's like old bricks from back then. And then Sarah was like, hey, I really want to get you some help to try to clear this title. I thought, this is so obviously a case of reparations because of America's first attempt at reparations right in that area. And I want to go to another clip from The Cost of Inheritance that features our other guest, Lottie Lee Abdullah. I've looked at my own family history and I've documented three different governors that were likely involved in creating the laws of, of slavery. When I found out that Brianna had studied political science, that whole area, I thought, well, that matches the harm that I need to unwind. For white people, one of the most important things to know is this is not a gift. I am repaying a debt. I started working with Lottie. I've learned things about my grandmother. I've learned about a lot about my great-grandparents, down to the personality traits and even some of the ways I stand when I take pictures. It is very creepy to see someone, you know, who's born in the 1870s have the same <laughs> pose when, they, when she took pictures. Bri and I teach a class in reparative genealogy. We really cater to white people who have a family background of enslavement, and we give you an idea of what steps you would take to begin to do repair work. One of the first steps, understand the genesis of the racial wealth gap. You've got black people today in America that own about 2% of U.S. wealth. After all of this time, about 2%. How did we get here? The history of my family really shows exactly how it works mechanically. It all started with Elisha Paxton, my third great grandfather. He established a plantation near Lexington, Virginia, beginning around 1815. And with the proceeds, likely from the plantation operations, he was able to send many sons to law school, including my second great grandfather. 
So right there, you, you have the benefit as education. In the early 1830s, several of Elisha's sons, including my second great-grandfather, moved to the Mississippi Delta. There they set up a law practice and later multiple cotton plantations. Cotton became king. Cotton drove the creation of the Wall Street banks and made really the economy of the United States. But where did it put African Americans? So if you go back to 1860, we know there's about four million black people held in bondage. Those people are the most liquid asset in the country. 22 trillion in today's value in terms of the value of those folks to the country. It's an enormous impact. So the first is what was extracted from those people during that period of time. The second is what was extracted from those people following that time during the Jim Crow era. That is a clip of the cost of inheritance that's premiering on PBS this week. Lottie Lee Dula is with us, descendant of William Hayes Paxton, who was an enslaver in the Mississippi Delta with reparations for slavery, a portal for white families walking the path of direct repair. Um, if you can talk about your relationship with Brie Cuffey, um, who we see in this film, a young black woman, when she talks about reparations for her is repaying student debt. How do you hook up? Thank you, Amy, and it's a real honor to be here with you today. <clears throat> in 2000, early 2018, um, as you'll see in the, the documentary, um, I found some boxes, and within those boxes, I found records of my family's uh, <clears throat> records of enslavement um, on a plantation in Mississippi. And <clears throat> within about 24 hours, I had decided I was going to have to go on a journey of repair. Um, and one of the first things I did, looking around to figure out what, where do I go? Who do I—I've got to talk to somebody about this, this history and decide what to do. I discovered a group called Coming to the Table, and they were having a national gathering uh, that summer. And at that national gathering, they were going to be discussing um, reparations. So I attended, and I noticed immediately, uh, I think the youngest person at this gathering, and <clears throat> that was Brianna Cuffey, and we both ended up attending the uh, reparations <clears throat> session. And I made a bunch of pretty arrogant statements, saying how I wanted, wanted essentially to change the world and build a portal, and I wanted to know who would partner with me, and there were crickets. And I sort of wandered off a bit dejectedly, and Brie walked up to me and rolled up on me, um, and she just said, you, you have some pretty uh, <laughs> mighty ideas there, but you haven't thought about people like me. You're setting up scholarships. You're recommending this and that. What about me? I have a six-figure college debt. I'm working three jobs. I'm barely making it. What do you have for me? And so in that moment, I realized not only was this the perfect partner <laughs> for the portal, but that a path was opening up right in front of my eyes as to a beginning step I could take to engage in direct repair. So that's how we met. And um, as you'll see in the film, our relationship unfolds. Well, uh, Lottie, we only have a, about a minute, but I'm wondering your, your response. Uh, it's gotten a lot of attention, the uh, Nikki Haley's response as a, a GOP presidential candidate to uh, the causes of the Civil War. Oh, it, <clears throat> I'm disgusted by that, that comment. Um, of course, we know the cause of the Civil War, it's slavery. In fact, I have in, in my ancestors' uh, <clears throat> memoir, uh, there's a direct quote, and he says, I don't know what anybody else is calling this war, but I call it the war for the slaves. So it just, it just goes to show that we, we really, we are so far apart in how we are looking at our history we really need to come together. And that's really what we recommend and how our portal works, is we take a very, very fine look at history and we bring black and white people together to engage in reparative genealogy and looking at our history together and forming bonds of repair.